okay so we define what an operator is we define what a linear operator is so we will look at the notion of the inverse of an operator in this lecture and some consequences based on the definition itself okay so suppose you have some linear operator a and we are interested in some another linear operator x such that x times a is equal to i right if you are able to multiply with this operator you know from the left side and such that the resulting operator is just the identity operator then we call x the left inverse of a and we write it as al inverse right similarly we can define a right inverse for for a linear operator a it, if it exists then it must satisfy the relation a times ar inverse is equal to i right so these so the um, you know existence and the relationship between the left inverse and right inverse is much more complicated if you are dealing with infinite dimensional spaces but in our discussions we are primarily going to uh, stick to finite dimensional spaces where we are, we are able to uh, show a couple of very you know interesting and uh, you know sort of results which can be obtained based on first principle so let's look at these results one of them is that if for a given operator a you know both a left inverse and a right inverse exist then they are unique and identical right so you know this just follows from the definition itself right so you might have seen something like this in the context of matrices right so later on we will see that you know operators are intimately connected to matrices right so we will come to that in in a few lectures from now but um, let's look at you know abs uh, operators in an abstract form for the moment right so you have you are given a left inverse and you are given a right inverse so first we must show that they are identical right so we are given that a l inverse exists and a r inverse exists so a l inverse times a must be equal to the identity but this also is equal to a times a r inverse so we are able to write a l inverse is equal to a l inverse times i right you can multiply with the identity operator for free right you know the property of the identity operator is that it will do it will leave any other operator unchanged when it is multiplied by it. so now but in place of i you can write a times a r inverse right because we have you know we are given that there is an a r inverse now you rearrange these brackets so then you have a l a l inverse a times a r inverse so but a l inverse a must be equal to the identity so this is equal to i times a r inverse which is the same as a r inverse so we have managed to show that a l inverse is equal to a r inverse right now so if there is a left inverse and if there is a right inverse they must be equal right so this itself will in fact force both of them to be identical we are to be unique right so suppose there are two left inverses now each of them must be equal to the right inverse right if both of them are equal to the right inverse then they, that means they are both equal to each other as well right so they, therefore using this argument we can show that if if there are you know it's not possible to have more than one left inverse or more than one right inverse provided both the left inverse and the right inverse exist right so that is one result right i mean there are scenarios where you know one of these inverses doesn't exist and you have multiple of the other right so that's the uh, you know unsaid fact and it is true you can find such examples when you have infinite dimensional spaces but we are not going there at this point so let's say we are looking at finite dimensional spaces and we have a you know rigorous result which is that whenever you have a left inverse and a right inverse the two of them are the same so now we have one more result which we can also show and the argument is is very beautiful so let's look at this if for a linear operator the left inverse exists and is unique right i mean either you find a left inverse and a right inverse then you can show that they are unique and identical or if you are able to show that by some means that there the left inverse exists and it is unique then it forces that there is a right inverse and that also is unique right so the argument is the following 
So A L inverse A is equal to identity. Now which imply so you you can multiply throughout with A on the left hand side. So you have A times A inverse A L inverse A is equal to A times I, which is the same as A, but A can be written as I times A. Right? So now the point is that we want to somehow get to A times A L, A -L inverse. Right, so we have a l, a l inverse A is given, but we want to see what happens to A times A L inverse. Right, so we will group, you know, the, the left hand side here and this here. We'll bring this to the the left hand side. So you have A A times A L inverse minus I, you know, with an overall factor of A on the right hand side. That must be equal to zero. But zero is the same as I minus A L inverse A, right, which comes from this first equation. So we have zero. So this is zero is equal to i minus a l inverse a. And then now look at you know this equation. You have this object is equal to this object. So now we can bring this second term onto the the left hand side, the leftmost uh, you know side of this equation. So then you have a times a l inverse minus i minus a l inverse times a is equal to i. Now the right hand side is i because I have I am hanging on to just this i. So what have I managed to show? I started with the assumption that a l inverse a is equal to i. Now I seem to have got some other operator times a is equal to i, right? But we are told that a l inverse is unique. There is no second operator which there is no second operator x which when multiplied with a gives you i. So this operator itself must be equal to a l inverse, right? So th therefore it forces a a l inverse minus i plus a l inverse is equal to a l inverse. So if I, I cancel a l inverse on both sides, so I get a times a l inverse is equal to identity. But what is this equation? This is the equation that a times some operator x is equal to i means this operator must be the right inverse. So but the right inverse here is a l inverse. So we have the result that a r inverse exists and a r inverse is equal to a l inverse right whose uniqueness has already been given a l if a l inverse is unique so is a r inverse so if for a linear operator the left in inverse exists you know likewise you can argue from the right inverse as well if one of these inverses exists and if it is unique then you are guaranteed that the other inverse also exists and it is unique so we might as well in these kinds of scenarios we might just refer to these the inverse of an operator, right? So you have a uh, linear operator, you just call it inverse. So you don't have to speci specify that whether it's a left inverse or a right inverse, as long as, you know, if one of them exists and if it is unique, then the other also exists and that is also unique, right? So these are all results which are perhaps obvious once you have seen it, but they all have been worked out starting from first principles and using a, a very nice beautiful chain of arguments right so that's why we include this argument that's all for this lecture we will continue with our discussion on linear operators in the next lecture thank you